Good morning guys and welcome back to another video. We have a hurricane <laughs> blowing in tonight which is really exciting because it's the first proper rain we'll have had in three months. The land really needs it, the wells are super low so we're excited for the rain but we have a lot of preparation to do because it doesn't rain for three months of the summer. We treat the outdoors just as an extension of our house we don't have to worry about leaving things out and um, yeah we just got a bit of preparation to do for that plus it's going to be very windy so i need to do things like tie down my greenhouse so that's what we're going to spend today doing it is unfortunately quite hot today we were hoping that the weather would really cool down in september i think this is the last really hot weekend it's about gonna get up to about 34 celsius today so it does make it still a bit hard to work outside but you, you find it less overwhelming when you know it's kind of like the end. So yeah, we'll take you along for the day as we prepare for a hurricane after a drought. So when I uh, mentioned about the hurricane in our last video, a lot of you were concerned about our greenhouse, and rightly so, so I've got a few extra measures I want to put in. It is already tied down with some tent hooks here. I hammered in a load of these spare hooks that we had as well but they're I don't know how strong they are I've got a lot of those in so I have got some breeze blocks behind that I'd use to keep the cardboard down so I'll put them inside and yeah a few other bits I'm going to crack on with now Fancy knot are you doing here? It's, not, it's just a bowling, a bowline. <laughs> it's a sailing knot, but we do use it in climbing. You can put loads of weight through it and it's easy to undo. Mm. So how we are securing this to this is because we have a closed loop because of the bowling. This magnet is here purely for show and because it's extra yeah, fun. <laughs> so we have that closed loop and then we're going all the way over the greenhouse back down because we have a closed loop what we can do is we can use that to anchor to the magnet will actually stop it from sliding up that's so good that's good so we'll do it from as high as it can be so then it'll just go tighter so what we can do here is an overhand knot which way i'll do that from scratch so you can see it's really easy now. you just go and through so then what we can do is go through this loop and then if you get the end of your rope you can follow the overhand back through Ewan's favorite pastime is teaching people not mm -hmm. yeah, look how good that looks and the good thing about this knot is it's really easy to adjust so you can pull it tight as you want it and pull it all through voila happy yeah I think so. cool. it's not going to go anywhere so. no. and then it is also tied to this tree yeah next job we need to put a roof back on the bathroom Good, 
popped out to do a quick food shop, get our rations in before we batten down the hatches uh, and now we just need to go grab some drinking water. So it ended up being a really hot afternoon, so I took an opportunity to put together the latest gift from Ellie Glide in the shade. Thank you so much, Ellie Glide, for this. We're really grateful. This bike here is the City Cross. A bit more of a, a road bike style, a bit more lightweight, less sort of, like there's no suspension, less gears, etc. Basically for efficiency for your commute or road cycle. This bike has a top range of 75 kilometers an hour, as long as you're not going full speed with what I like full assist. Has seven speed Shimano gears. The battery in the motor is a 250 watt brushless motor and it gives you 45 torque and enables max speed of 25 kilometers an hour, as I've said. So it's nice and powerful. So what's cool about this bike is it has a torque sensor. So it, um, it adjusts its sort of it's output based on how much you're inputting, which is quite nice. It has the usual dual disc brakes and a nice LED headlight that's really super strong. Um, it has mud guards on this, which I really like. It'll help you through the puddles in the winter. Nice cozy foam saddle. And one feature I really like about this bike is it has a removable battery. So if you are in a city or, or something that potential for, for theft is there, then at least this alleviates some of that. So one of the things definitely like about this one is the uh, the carry basket. I have to get a basket and stick the sausage dog onto it to get a little sausage helmet. So it's like sturdy enough to hold 80 kilograms. Obviously that'll affect the, the battery range. So yeah, all in all, really smart bike. So we will take it for a spin. So thank you Ella Glide for this bike. It's really great now that we have four <laughs> of the Ella Glide products because my mum and sister are visiting soon so we can all go out on a, on a big adventure together. If you have any questions, if you're looking at buying one of the bikes or the scooter, feel free to ask us, we can give you an honest opinion of what model we think would suit your requirements best. I think as far as e-bikes go, they are so well priced and when we did our long bike ride a few videos back our batteries were quite low so we were trying to not use them as much and you could just so notice how much help you're getting from the electrical element of the bike 
and it just yeah it just really gives us so much more freedom the white one this new one is a pretty sexy bike the other two are more like mountain bikes this one you just feel a bit fancy especially i love the front basket that i can attach that's a really great adjustment so yes thank you ellie glide if you have any questions please do let us know and you will find in the description a link to ellie guys products and you can get 50 euros off with our code thank you for watching us these collaborations really help us support our project and our channel so yeah and i hope we are sharing products with you that you will really enjoy because they're ones that we love it has been a very hot afternoon it got up to 36 celsius i think it's still about that now at half five but we can start to see the storm rolling in and the wind is really picking up so we really need to get these last jobs finished I've just had hopefully my last cold shower of the year to cool me down, ready to crack on and get everything ready. So we took the windows out in the summer to just put shade cloth in to let more air in because it gets so hot in here so I need to put these back on before it rains they're just cheap perspex things that we threw together and then I just need to do this side it's going to be nice to have our view back though and this one when we take the bamboo down I'll be able to see <laughs> The storm is really coming in now. So far this hurricane has been very underwhelming. <laughs> it is forecast until Wednesday so there is still time and I think this evening it should get stronger and we might have some lightning and a lot more rain but so far it's just been a few drizzly showers. Just the top layer of the soil is wet it's not even gone into the ground properly yet so yeah, I was really excited to wake up to wildness and uh, yeah, so far it's, it's very calm.
this is the first day I haven't worn sandals in three months. Feels very strange. Do you want to go for a little walk? Come on then. Come on. Diego thinks we're putting him in the van and he doesn't like going in the van. <laughs> Come on. Bon dia, bon dia. So that was quite a night and quite a morning. It's absolutely sopping. Everything's completely changed colour. Amazing news. So I was going to show you some of the water we've managed to collect so far. So our little reservoir that's right next to the house had the wine tank, which is 325 litres. Check that out. There's a lot of water. That's all come off the roof. So just goes to show that if we had a proper rainwater collection system, then we'd actually be able to get quite a lot. The well has come up quite a bit. You can quite see where that bit of plastic is, but just behind the bit of plastic, you can see like a lighter patch, and I think that's where it was. As a few of you commented in the last video, the greenhouse. If you get a drum roll going. We definitely had gusts of like, 30 40 mile an hour wind last night not super strong but strong enough that it could have caused some damage so you ready drum roll please <sighs> it's totally fine <laughs> so see this red cable we went all the way over on the top of it and then it's got four or five guy ropes attached it to the climbing wall there so it can't slip up and down and then inside it has four tires in it on the shelves so it's pretty sturdy. Everything's all closed up, so there's not too much air getting in. So yeah, so far so good. Oh, go on, lad. That's your bad leg. What's he doing? Scratching it. Go on. Not that sausage, no, don't do. Quick wine update for you. Um, it's been a couple of weeks. I think, yeah, day 15, day 14, since harvest now. All going well, fermentation's still going on. I had a bit of inspiration after watching Guy and Kylie at Make Do Grow, and they were doing some experimenting with secondary fermentation in bottle. And in the wine world, in the natural wine world, that's known as Petillant Naturel. So, we've got half Demijohn, but it's pretty much just gonna turn to vinegar because there's too much space in it. It's not oxidized too much yet. So we're gonna give it a go, see what happens. Um, so I've got two 7-Up bottles industry standard. One issue we may have had is that it's already finished fermenting. If that has happened, we have got some tiny bits of yeast. So we don't have to put a tiny bit of yeast in or put a tiny bit of sugar in. The problem is, any advice you give me, it's going to be too late because I've already done it. So, should we go with sugar? I reckon we go with sugar. Yeah. No idea. We'll go with sugar, see what happens. <laughs> Oh, 
So, aim. Just before that musty stuff. Yeah. So I've never done this before, I've got no idea what I'm doing, but what Guy and Kylie did was squeeze the bottle so there was no air in it. Oh, I need to do hydrometer reading. And then you put the sugar in. We don't know yet, it depends whether the fermentation has finished. Oh, okay. Hopefully this will fit. Oof, oh, it's going the other one, it's got less in. So, now hive mind, how much sugar? <laughs> um, shall I Google it? I reckon like a teaspoon. Two teaspoons? Let's go two teaspoons. So apparently for pet nap we want 2.5 bricks. Oh, you're putting a lot of sugar in. It has to be high enough to re-ferment, otherwise we're just Back sweetening the wine together. Okay. So how much have you put in so far? Four teaspoons each. I'm gonna go two more and then see where we're at. Depends how fizzy we want really. What they did was squeeze it because there's no air left. And because these are pressurised bottles, they shouldn't explode. Right then, we'll see what happens. <laughs> run sausage! <laughs> run sausage, run! <laughs>
little uh, sparkling wine pet nut update for you. Um, I don't know if you remember, but when this was closed, it was squeezed all the way. It's been two days, so it's created that much headspace. So I'll give it a shake. It's slightly fizzing. So I'm going to give it a little bit longer anyway. Well, quite a, quite a bit longer. Um, but yeah, I'll give you an update as and when.